All right, today we're gonna to be taking you through the installation of your new tap out tuning carbon fiber cold air intake from a stock engine setup. All right, step one is we'd recommend setting out all the parts from the kit as well as the tools you'll need. I'll include a uh, image here of all the tools we'd recommend you use for this installation to make it go as smoothly as possible. We'd also recommend putting covers on the front of your ATSV just to avoid potentially scratching any of the paint. Next, you're gonna to wanna to remove the engine cover. You do this by first taking off the oil drain cap. Secondly, you'll unscrew this and it's a T30 bit that'll come off and then you can lift the cover off uh, from the front and it unclips from the rear. Then you want to put the oil fill cap back on so you don't drop anything in there accidentally. Next up is we're going to remove this section of the intake here. You'll see there's a vacuum line you need to disconnect as well as two band clamps. To remove these band clamps you'll use an 8mm socket and those just unscrew easily. Once you do that you'll be able to disconnect the vacuum line that you see there running above the hose. You press that vacuum line together and you'll see it unlatch. Next step is we'll remove the wiring harness that is attached to the air box. You'll see two clips that you can remove by using a trim tool and popping them out of the holes. You may have to mess with that a bit because they're in there pretty good usually. Next you can disconnect both of the mass airflow sensors. You'll pull that tab up and there's a second tab behind it you can squeeze and it'll slide right out. After you've disconnected the mass airflow sensors, you'll find it's helpful to tuck them out of the way as well as the vacuum line you can see we disconnected earlier. Next, we're going to remove another band clamp using an 8mm socket, and that way we'll be able to remove the entirety of the air box to give us access to the intake pipe. Now, even though we'll be reusing the bottom of the air box, by removing the whole thing, it just makes accessing things way easier. Next, you're going to want to remove these 10 millimeter bolts. Damn it. Hold on. Next, you're going to remove these two 10 millimeter bolts, which you can see at the end of the screwdriver there, that attach to the PCB line. The best way to remove these is to get a 10 inch extension for your ratchet. It'll give you easy access to both of these bolts. Helps to have a magnetic tray as well so you don't lose any of these components.
Now we'll be ready to remove the PCV line. You can get that out of the way. And we'll show you how to easily remove the clip that attaches to that line. Okay, the next step will be to remove this PCV line. You'll see that there are two tabs inside this line that you'll need to remove. They're located between the two silver pieces and you can use a pick to reach inside the line and depress the tab. Once you've depressed the first one, the next one is 180 degrees comparison. So you can spin the line to give you access to the next one. Can be a little tricky to get those so just take your time with it and uh, try not to force anything too much and as you can see on the inside there's one clip there and then again on the opposite side you'll see the second now you can take that pcv line and put it somewhere where you won't lose it the next step will be removing the band clamp from the bypass valve that is a seven millimeter and you can use either a socket or a screwdriver tool like that Next, we'll remove this intake hose. And you can see it's attached by a metal clip. You can use a long flathead screwdriver to pry this towards you. And by prying it towards you, you'll release the lock that you can see in the center. Once that clip has been removed and you'll hear the click, you'll be able to rock this hose back and forth just a bit and it'll come right out. Now with those items removed, you've completed all of the driver's side stock components removal, and we can move on to the passenger side. Next, we're gonna remove the entire vacuum assembly. Now you'll notice that we didn't do this first, but for those of you doing this at home, you may find it easier to do this first because it'll give you easier access to all the components on the driver's side. Okay, as we said, there's quite a few connections you're gonna to have to disconnect here, so just kind of follow along as we go through everything on uh, the vacuum assembly here. One along the firewall, you can pop that off with a trim tool. This clip, you can see on the bottom, there's a metal band. Just push up from the bottom, it will release and then you can pull it off. That trim, use the trim tool to pop that out. Same thing there. That clip, you just squeeze, same way as the other one. Tuck that out of the way. There's another one in the back. See that cover just pops off to release the line. You can see there's two clamps there. You can use a pair of needle nose pliers to remove. Flathead screwdriver helps to slide them off. Same thing there. And again, a flathead screwdriver helps get those off. It helps to Tuck away the hoses in a place so they don't get lost or disorganized. Here's another clip. Push down from the top, you'll feel it release and you can pull it off. Let's 
See, he just disconnected that line there. Then we're gonna work our way around the back. You can see there's a line there. You can see that came off right there. Then we'll swing back around, use a 10 millimeter. You can remove these. connector there you saw same thing there metal clip you just push that in then you can lift the whole assembly up you'll now have access to another one Let's see where that's still connected you'll want to move this whole assembly forward and then it'll give you easy access to remove that now lift it up again And again, by doing this, sometimes you'll find that there are zip ties from uh, previous work being done, but by pulling this whole assembly forward, it'll give you easy access to anything. And just be slow when you're removing it, because just in case you miss something, uh, you'll feel it snag and you can look for anything you may have missed. Now you can see that's been totally removed, giving us more access. Next step, we're gonna move another band clamp from the bypass valve hose. That's a seven millimeter. Then we're going to remove the charge pipe or loosen it just a bit so we have some more room to work with. There's two 10 millimeter bolts diagonal from each other. And, um, you know, try not to drop those. And if you do, pray that they hit the ground. Now you're able to remove the charge pipe. And we're on to the next step. All right, next we're gonna remove the passenger side PCV line. Now you'll note uh, there's some differences here in this particular location we're pointing to, depending on your ATSV. This one has a clamp that you can remove so you can pull that top off and remove the hose. Um, but some ATSVs will not have that, they'll be totally attached, and you'll need to remove the PCV hose the same way you did on the driver's side. There's two clips on each side, and you can use a pick to get in there to remove both of those clips. And you'll see we remove the charge pipe to give us access to the hose there, and we can remove the back side of the PCV line. Now this uh, can be a little tricky to get to, but it's the same concept. You'll use a pick to get in there, and undo both of the tabs on both sides of the clip and you can remove that entire hose. All right. So like on this one, the band has been loosened. You can pull that off. And in the rear, once you uh, get the clip back there, 
can pop those two tabs, like I said, just as on the driver's side, they're just a little bit more difficult to get to. Get that off, and with the charge pipe removed, you can slide it right out. Next, disconnect the borrow sensor. It's a tab you slide back, depress it, and it will release. Next, we're gonna remove the passenger side intake. And this is gonna be the same way, so we're gonna use a flathead screwdriver you can get in right between the reservoir. And you can't really see in there, but it's the same way. It's that metal band that wraps around. So if we put a screwdriver in there, a flathead, we'll be able to release the lock uh, from both sides. And I'll show you that lock. Let me get it out so you can see what I'm talking about. It's, things are pretty tight in there, so you'll have to maneuver that hose around a little bit. And it will release, and you can see it's the same thing there. So that clip is facing the um, firewall, so that's the direction it's pointed. Mm -hmm. And it's the same operation there. When you pry up with the flathead, you release that lock. It will come out of where it's held in place. Again, that's a little bit tricky, but uh, just take your time and maneuver that out, and you'll be able to remove the whole assembly. Next, you're gonna to wanna to make sure and clean the surface of the inlet around the edges where the hose is gonna be making contact. That's just to ensure that uh, nothing gets slippery and slides off and the hose clamp can bite down good. Nothing's gonna loosen up there. To do that, you can just spray some brake clean on a shop towel. Get down in there and just wipe the surface And even on a super low mileage car, you can see how dirty that is. So it's always important to clean that up. After you've done the passenger side, you're gonna to wanna to do the driver's side as well. Make sure you have a totally clean surface for when you install the hoses. All right, now we're getting the fun stuff and installing the new parts. So it's important when you install this, and this is your three inch to two inch hose, You'll want the two inches on the bottom and the three inches on the top. It's important to mount the clamp facing forward. So once it's installed, you'll be able to get down in there and tighten the clamp. Another important thing is how you position the hose on the compressor inlet. And we'll take a separate one that's not in a car to show you exactly how that should be on there to make sure you have no leaks or problems. So you'll notice when you install this, this is one out of the car. You slide the hose over and make sure you get down right to the base of where it starts to flare out. It's very important that you don't go past the flare point. If you do, when you tighten the clamp, it'll slip off and come off that inlet. So just make sure it's nice and right along that edge, right when it starts to flare out. The next important thing to note is when you have the band clamp on there, you wanna get it right at the bottom. You can have just a little bit of hose showing through, but you basically wanna have it right at the bottom. This is gonna ensure that the band clamp is grasping around the whole surface and there's no possibility of things slipping off because it's got a good bite right on the end of that hose. So, when installing the three inch to two inch hoses, they'll slide over the compressor inlet you'll see there. Notice how the band clamp is facing forward towards the front of the car so you can access it to tighten it. If you face it towards the rear, you won't be able to get to it. Now on the passenger side, you see we have the three to two inch pipe installed, but on this case, you see that the band clamp is facing the rear because there's no room in the front. Now to access this, because it's pretty tight down in there, we're gonna remove the whole charge pipe. So to do that, there's a band clamp on the bottom of this hose, it's an eight millimeter. And if you get back behind there, you can loosen that up. Once that's loose, you can remove the whole assembly. There's just a little clip back there you can pop off, and you can get that completely out of your way. And then, you'll see, 
There's the bank clamps. We'll pull that out of there. And now there's plenty of room to get to that band clamp to tighten it down. And again, you want to remember to make sure that the band clamp is at the base of the hose like we showed in the previous video to make sure that it gets a good grip and is on that flat surface, not the part that flares out. All right, so on the driver's side, we'll take an 11 millimeter and you can tighten that band clamp. Make sure you get it nice and snug on there. This one's fairly easy to access. You shouldn't have much trouble getting to it. Like I said, make sure it's nice and tight. You can double check it by doing that. And then we'll move over to the passenger side. So now we're on the passenger side. You can see the band clamp is pointed towards the firewall. And work your way down in there. The best way to get down in there is with an extension. And you can come from the back side. And it's gonna take you a little while to tighten that all the way down because you don't have a lot of room to rotate the wrench and the ratchet or whatever you're using to tighten this. Another important thing is to make sure that that hose is down at the very edge like we showed in the previous video um, of the compressor inlet. So you're not over where it starts to flare out. You're right even with that edge before it starts to flare. And then that band clamp is right at the base. So it's biting down nice and tight on that hose and it's not going to come off. As you can see, there's definitely less room to work on the passenger side as there is over on the driver's side. But with an extension and um, your preferred tool, you can get down in there just fine. And again, you can check, make sure it's on there nice and solid. It should not come off. If you tug and it slides, it's not tight enough. So go back in there and tighten it up more. It should be on there very solidly. Next, we're gonna start swapping sensors over from the factory hoses to the new carbon fiber. We'll start by removing this sensor, which is a T25 bit, and moving it over here, and that is a five millimeter Allen. You'll see that you line up the hole to use the five millimeter allen. Just snug, not too tight. Now we're going to move the MAF sensor over from the driver's side of the air box to the driver's side of the carbon fiber. Something to note here, uh, that is a T15 bit, and when you move it over here, you're gonna use a four millimeter Allen. Uh, but in the meantime, before we install it, we'll need to drill out the holes because on the carbon fiber side of things, it's slightly larger, and you're gonna use a 3 16 drill bit to do that, and we'll show you how to do it. All right, so get yourself a 3 16 drill bit. You can just hold it in your hand, it's aluminum, so it'll drill real easy. So just slowly go through that. And do that on both sides and that will allow you to then install it under the carbon fiber make sure you get any loose bits of metal out of there first now it's important to put this in the correct way and like i said start from driver's side to driver's side and you'll notice that the holes line up perfectly this way but if you were to put it in the opposite way the holes don't line up so you know that's not right once those are in, then you can use the four millimeter Allens to tighten them down. Just get them snug, you don't need to over tighten them. All 
Okay, now we've got that one installed. We'll move over to the passenger side. Same thing here, it's gonna be a T15 bit on the MAF sensor. Then it'll be a four millimeter Allen. Install it into the carbon fiber. And likewise, like the driver's side, you're gonna to have to drill these out with a 3 16th drill bit so that they fit. So on the passenger side, you'll notice there's an arrow showing airflow. So make sure you put it in the same way in the carbon fiber side. When you pull it out, you also notice that arrow corresponds to the opening on the bottom. So that's the direction of airflow. Same thing here, you're gonna drill it out. You can just hold it in your hand and do it. Drill, make sure there's no loose metal hanging on anywhere. Then you can install it. And you'll notice on this, there's also only one way to put it in correctly. See, it slides in. And notice that it's sealed and right against the bottom. You can also see there's the airflow coming that way, so you know it's in the right direction. Now, if you were to put it in the other way, it seems like it might work, but when you look at it, it doesn't seal. That should be tight and it hits that lip. So there's only one way to put it in. And again, then you can use the four millimeter Allen to tighten that down. And then you're done with the passenger side. All right, now we're back over in the engine bay and we're gonna install the first carbon fiber pipe. So you'll get the band clamp for the three inch side of this rubber hose. And again, make sure that band clamp you can access from the rear so you can get in there to tighten it once the carbon fiber is installed. installing it just kind of work it back and forth and the carbon fiber pipe will slide in that rubber hose make sure you push it down until it's making good contact and solid you want to make sure that it's not sticking up because if it's sticking up and you don't have it all the way in there it will hit the hood so you can see how it looks it runs right along it's tied in there it's not sticking up now we can tighten up the band clamp. You can use an 11 millimeter here. It helps to use an extension to get them in there. Again, just make sure that the band clamp is all the way around the hose and it's not crooked or anything. It's got a nice good seal around the whole hose. Once that's complete, then you can plug the sensor back in. You'll hear it click. And then you're set. Okay, now we can start disassembling the factory airbox because we will be reusing the bottom half. There are a number of eight millimeters that run around the perimeter, or you can use a Phillips if that's all you got. Just make sure you get every one and the lid will come right off. The last screw removed, you can lift the top off. You see the filters are still in there. This guy happened to be running K&Ns. 
Now we have the bottom part of the filter, which we will reuse. You'll also be reusing the screws that you removed around the perimeter. This is a good time to clean this out if there's any debris that's gathered in there. All right, with the bottom of the air box cleaned out now, you'll see there's three grommets. This will sit right in. You feel it kind of click into place, like you saw there. Moving on to the catch can installation, you'll see the kit comes with two self-tapping screws and washers, and on the top side of the catch can, the bracket to mount it is already installed. You can remove that with two Phillips screws. After you remove those screws, you're going to take the bracket over to the car, and we'll show you where, and mark two spots to mount it, and then you can use these self-tapping screws to attach the bracket. Once the bracket's attached, then you can reconnect the catch can. So just grab a paint pen or marker, come over here, and you'll see. Hold it upside down so you can mark it. Yep. Just got two spots marked there. Next, we can install the catch can bracket with the two self-tappers, and they come with washers as well. So make sure to use those. And you're gonna use a seven millimeter for these. Now, when you actually install a bracket, you're gonna to wanna to put it back right side up. So then you won't see the screws and it'll be a clean install. Make sure that it's mounted solidly, it's not loose or anything. And now we're ready to attach the catch cam. So you'll see the holes in the top of the catch can. You can get those both started and grab a Phillips and tighten them down all the way. See if you have it oriented all the way to the left. We found that's the best way for running the lines. All right, moving on, we can install the three inch pipe. It's three inches on both sides, not like the other ones. The clamps. And you want to put it about halfway on there so it's even on both sides when you connect the other part of the carbon fiber pipe. Slide the band clamp over, and that's going to be an 11 millimeter. Just try and orient them so that you have the best access to tighten them up. Same thing as before with the other ones, you want to make sure those band clamps are right on the edge, but not over. Now we can install the filters and the pipes into the top of the airbox, which you'll need to do first before you install the airbox in the car. You can do this by flipping the airbox upside down and we'll show you how to have the filters on there. Again, make sure you have the pipes in the right side. They're oriented correctly here as to which side they should be going in. So you can see we got the first filter on. They come with band clamps. Slide it on. And you also notice that there are rubber edge pieces around there to seal that nicely. 
just make sure they didn't get moved around in shipping uh, so that they're oriented correctly. Once the filters are installed, you can tighten down the band clamps. So when tightening down the air filters, you want to leave yourself roughly half inch a gap between the MAP sensor brackets and the air box, maybe a little more. Um, this will give you some flexibility when installing this kit to get everything lined up correctly. And you can see you got those tightened down. So we'll go over to the car. This will take just a bit of finessing to get it in there. And that's why we haven't tightened down these band clamps yet. So you can kind of keep things loose and work things into position. So kind of get things in the ballpark and you can kind of maneuver things around to get things to set right. And the carbon fiber lid will seal very nicely against the bottom uh, of the factory air box. Once you're happy with how that looks, you can reinstall all of the screws that you took out when you took the top of the factory airbox off and get that tightened down. Once that's tightened down, you can do some more adjustments to the carbon fiber pipes to get them where you want them so they look nice and you can go ahead and tighten down those band clamps. With the top reinstalled, we can move over to tightening the band clamps. So you'll tighten these ones up and then the one down here once you're happy with how they look. Now over on the driver's side to tighten down this clamp, you're going to grab yourself a long extension. About a 10 inch or so. It'll allow you to get back there. You kind of got to take your arm under the pipe. It'll give you good access. We oriented it so that's facing the front. So again, that's important when you're putting these fan clamps on to help them in the right direction. With those band clamps tightened, we can reconnect the mass airflow sensors. And a good way to know which side is which, purple for passenger side and red for driver side. Run the driver's side under that pipe. Snaps in and close the red tab. Same thing on the purple side. Clip it in, close the tab. And those are hooked up and ready. First hose you can install is 42 and a half inches. So make sure you can double check that length if you want. You can see the way we run it, go under the pipe. I'm following the path of the previous PCD line that used to be here. Then, you can slide on the clamp, which is quarter inch. Slide it on. Then you can tighten the clamp. And using an extension here can be helpful. that line run and slide the paint clamp on and attach it to the left side of the catch can. Just make sure that's on there solidly and that the band clamp is grabbing on to the line.
Now you can grab the 13 and a quarter inch hose. That's going to attach to the barb on the passenger side. And then the other end is gonna go into the center of the catch can. And then you can tighten up those band clamps. Next we've got the 27 and a quarter inch line. That's gonna run from the right side of the catch can back to the driver's side valve cover. And so you can link that under the two intake pipes. Install the band clamp. And you can see where you can attach it. It's right behind the fill for the oil. And you can slide the bank clamp on the other side, tighten things up, like I said, on the right side of the catch here. With everything fastened, we can now move on to the next step and remove the blow-off hoses from the passenger side and driver's side, and those are seven millimeters. Once you've removed the driver's side blow-off hose, you'll need to slightly adjust the clamp. And there's a clip there. You can use a screwdriver to pry it up slightly and rotate it about 90 degrees counterclockwise. And that'll ensure you have good access to tighten it when you install it back on the carbon fiber pipe down there. And just make sure you re-tighten that clamp. Use a pair of needle nose pliers to do that. Location of the top band clamp is fine. It's just the bottom one that needs adjusted. So when installing the driver's side blow-off hose, it can be helpful to use just a little bit of lubricant on the bottom side to help it slide in over the end. So you'll go right on then. Then you can attach the top. Tighten up both band clamps. Now we're going to be working on putting the charge pipe back as well as the blow off valve hose. Same story here on the bottom. You're going to want to rotate about 25 degrees or about from 12 o'clock to 1 o'clock. So that will give you access to the band clamp once it's installed in the car. Take the charge pipe. Reinstall it, but you're going to leave it loose. You're not going to reattach it because you need some flexibility to attach the blow-off hose. Slide in there loosely. And take the blow-off hose, attach it to the bottom first. And again here, it'd be helpful to use just a little bit of lubricant the bottom end and you can move the charge pipe around slide the top part of the hose on With that done then you can tighten up the clamps once the clamps are tightened then you can reattach the charge pipe. the block valve hoses all tightened in you can reattach the charge pipe with the two bolts 
on the top right and the lower left bottom. At the top of the charge pipe fastened, don't forget about the lower part. A little tricky to get to, but you can get down in there, make sure that's nice and snug. Okay, we're getting in the home stretch here. We can uh, reattach our vacuum manifold assembly. We're going to start by getting some clips in the back. You can see that one there. Make sure you hear that click, because if it doesn't click, it's not on there all the way. Let's get these loosely tightened to start. You gotta make sure you get those lines in the back before you tighten this down so you have room to access it. If you're removing this or reinstalling it for the first time, it can be helpful. Before you take it off, just take a picture on your phone. And you can reference it and see where everything goes. But you'll see that the lines kind of fall into place basically exactly where they need to go. With all the lines connected, this last one, and there's one more over here. And again, you can tighten those up. You can use a pair of you know, nose pliers and just make sure to slide that clamp back over. And uh, double check, make sure you got everything reconnected, then you can start tightening down everything. And again here, this just needs to be snug. Don't over torque it or you will crack the plastic.
And the final step is putting the engine cover back on. It's the reverse of how you take it off, remove the oil fill cap. You see there's two clips in the back. You can feel it kind of sit in. Put the cap back on. Tighten it up, and you're done.